Welcome back to chapters three to five, where we will take a look at some best practices for building at scale. Before starting to build any workflow in Monday.com, we recommend you follow our six step methodology, which is explained in detail in the building workflows in Monday.com course in the Monday Academy. If you have not yet checked out this course, I highly recommend you do so. If you suspect you might have a workflow which is defined as a large one or one which has the potential to scale quickly, following the methodology will be even more important. Steps one and two of the methodology will help you to determine the best structure for your workflow in terms of the number of boards, the board structure, and which features you will include. Using the methodology to properly plan your workflow will help you to avoid falling into one of the traps which can cause a workflow to become problematic at scale. We are also working on a new course, which will dive deeper into the methodology and best practices for building even more complex workflows. The course will be called Advanced Workflows and will be available in the Monday Academy very soon. With all of that being said, let's dive into the most important things to consider when planning a workflow for scale. First of all, planning your workflow structure. This consists of defining your workflow, the board structure and your reporting needs, automations and integrations, such as involving your team, adding the right permissions and being mindful of duplicate or heavy automations, as well as making sure to properly plan your integrations. And lastly, managing your end users, standardizing their experience and processes within Monday.com. So to start with, planning and building the right workflow structure this is crucial for building for scale. Just for a brief recap, the steps to take to best plan for this are defining and visualizing your workflow, determining the number of boards and the right structure, and defining and prioritizing reporting needs. So when it comes to defining and visualizing your workflow, we recommend creating a visual map of your workflow. This is going to help you to better define your workflow needs and the associated outcomes. It will also help you to understand whether you want to build your workflow in one board or in multiple boards and which board structure is best. By going through the exercise of properly visualizing the steps in a process or the needs of your projects, you can also make better decisions about how to then translate this into Monday boards and dashboards while keeping in mind the need to keep the workflow lean. We recommend using Monday Canvas to create your workflow map, but any visual mapping program can be used, for example, PowerPoint, Google Slides, Miro, for example. For example, here is an initial discovery of the workflow needs shown in Monday Canvas. As you can see, we have mapped out the goal, use case and teams using it. This can then enable us to further map out the workflow to help us determine the structure and boards. Next, Determine the number of boards you need and the right structure. When we are dealing with a workflow which is large or has the potential to have one or more of the characteristics we defined in the previous chapter, meaning we need to think about scale, we might make different choices when it comes to picking the structure of the board. It is important to bear in mind the number of boards needed as well. In the Building Workflows methodology, we outline the three main ways to structure a board to manage a process workflow. The first is structuring the steps as groups. In this case, the instances are managed as items and the groups in the process are the steps, meaning that they move down the board vertically. Another is where you're tracking the steps of the process horizontally. In this case, as you can see, we are tracking the steps and statuses using columns. This works best when the process you are managing is repetitive and predictable, and is probably the most common way to structure a process board. And finally, we can use a hybrid of the two structures. As you can see, this is where we can use a mixture of columns and also sub items to track the different data points. So let's say we are managing a manufacturing process to track all of the steps needed for manufacturing and building tables. In this particular example, each new item or table has 20 different steps involved and each step is run by a different person, each with their own due date. 
We would also need to be able to track the status for each of these steps since they are dependent on one another. We would usually choose a horizontal board using columns to manage it, since this kind of process is repetitive and predictable. However, since we are dealing with so many steps and each of these 20 steps will need a status column, a date column and a person column, all amounting to 60 columns, this would therefore impact on our board performance. We therefore might choose to use another board structure such as hybrid. Let's take a look at how that might translate into a Monday board. As you can see in this example, we have grouped our board by planning, in production, completed and queued, with our table sitting as items. Using a hybrid structure, we have taken advantage of the sub-items to track the many different steps of the process, along with the columns to monitor the high-level status, the timeline and the effort. You might also choose to split the process over multiple boards with automations in place to continue the process to the second board once the steps in the first board have been completed. The last aspect is defining and prioritising your reporting needs. Reporting needs will influence the decisions you make on the data points you will track with the columns, how you break down your workflow into boards, and the board structure you choose. We won't be going into details today about how to define your reporting needs and how those needs will influence your decisions in terms of board building, but we recommend that you take our reporting webinar in the Monday Academy to learn more about that. Let's take a look at an example of how reporting can influence how you break your workflow into boards. Let's say the workflow you wanted to build involved managing a huge portfolio of projects. The reporting needs might suggest that each project should be managed in its own board so that they can feed into a top level portfolio dashboard. However, if we are aware that there are limitations in terms of the number of boards which can be connected to one dashboard, or the number of items we can report on in one dashboard, then we can foresee that in the future we might get close to or reach this limit. So instead, we might choose to consolidate the projects into fewer boards, such as quarterly boards, which you can then feed into one dashboard, or you can also split the dashboards, for example, into region or team. We also recommend that you define which of the needs are must-haves and which are nice to have in order to best prioritize. This will help you to build your boards with reporting needs in mind while ensuring you avoid the risks we outlined in chapter one, slower board performance and poor user experience. In the next chapter, we will continue with our recommended best practices, this time diving into automations and integrations and what to bear in mind when building these out.